الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين الله تبارك وتعالى تزس إن سورة طه chapter 20 and verses 17 and 18 بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تلك بيمينك بيمينك يا موسى قال هي عصاية توكأ عليها وأهش بها على غنمي ولي فيها مآرب أخرى الله said and when he was talking to, to Moses عليه السلام Allah said, and what is that in your right hand, O Moses? He said, it is my staff. I lean upon it, and I bring down leaves for my sheep, and I have therein other uses. Now, the Quran gives us many examples of tawheed, monotheism. And, you know, through, he gives it to us in, through examples we can understand. We don't do very well with, with abstract concepts, but with examples, it's, it's a very good way to comprehend the concept. So when Allah Taala asked Moses, What's, you know, what is that in your hand? Allah knew. Allah knew exactly what it was. But did Moses know what it was? Moses thought he was holding a staff. I mean, it was his staff. He's... You know, he uses it quite a bit, so he was very familiar with it. So Allah Taala wanted to teach Moses and teach all of us a lesson in Tawheed. And Allah says, you know, this, this staff that you are very familiar with, I'm going to change its nature. وَأَنْ أَلْقِ عَصَاكَ فَلَمَّا رَاهَ تَهْتَزُّ كَأَنَّهَا جَانٌ وَلَّا مُدْبِرًا وَلَمْ يُعَقِّبْ Ya Musa, aqbil wa la takhaf innaka min al aminin This is in Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 28 and verse 31. Now throw down your staff. Allah ordered them, throw your staff. Throw down your staff. But when he saw it slithering like a snake, he ran away without looking back. Allah reassured him, O Moses, draw near and have no fear. You are perfectly secure. Now it must have been something really scary for Moses to turn around and run and not even look back. Usually you run and you look back to make sure that not, but when you're in, in absolute fear, you're running full speed and you're not looking back. So this must have been a huge serpent that, you know, that appeared. So what the staff changed into wasn't any ordinary Snake. I mean, it was a serpent. It was something, you know, something, you know, huge. Later on, when, when Sayyidina Musa, he confronted the, the magicians. And, you know, when he took that sign from Allah to, to Moses, and, and Moses gathered all the, the, the uh, you know, the magicians, they brought uh, ropes and, and sticks, and they kind of, you know, made them look like snakes. And they, you know, the Saharu Ayur and Nas, they, they, you know, bewitched the eyes of the people. So the people thought, oh, you know, they can turn a staff into a snake too. But, you know, Allah told in, in Surah Taha also, وَأَلْقِ مَا فِي يَمِينِكَ تَلْقَثْ مَا صَنَعُ And throw what is in your right hand and it will swallow up what they have crafted. Now, what, uh, what Moses threw down into it was something more than a snake. He threw, he threw his stick down, his staff down, and it turned into a huge snake. But the snake ate all the sticks and ropes of the magicians. Now, snakes don't do that. So this was, this was a miracle from Allah. It was as clear as day. And the magicians knew there is no way any human being can come up. They were the masters of, of their art. And to see something like this, you know, the, the staff eating their, all of their stuff, they, they, had, they had to know that this is a miracle from Allah. That's when they fell down in, in you know, وَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ they, they, that, The strength of that sign threw them down in prostration, and they believed in Allah and, and in Musa. So the first point from, from that whole story is... Knowledge is important. The magicians had the knowledge, and when they saw something, they knew there is no way this is man-made, and they believed in it. So knowledge, in to appreciate Allah's signs, we have to have knowledge. Because if you have the knowledge, we are surrounded by miracles. Allah does not have to break the norms of, of the universe 
you know, for us to, to, to appreciate his creation. You know, everything, you look at your body, it's a miracle you get up from, from sleep and everything is functioning. Millions of things have to be functioning perfectly for you to get out of bed. I mean, it's just the miracle of the human body, but, the, you know, the signs go on and on. So that's one point. Knowledge is important. We have to acquire knowledge. And the second point, Allah says, وَأَلْقِي مَا فِي يَمِينِكَ the scholars of Tawheed pointed out to a precise fact. Nothing can have a reality unless Allah allows it to. Allah did not say, Ya Musa, throw your staff. He said, throw what's in your right hand. What was in his right hand? Was it a staff? Was it a snake? What was it? It was whatever Allah wanted it to be. And that's what, what Tawheed teaches us that whatever Allah wants is what happens. There is, you know, the knife does not cut out of its own power. The snake does not bite out of its own will. You know, the fire does not burn out of its something, you know, inherent in it. They all need permission from Allah to do it. And if we as believers understand this concept of Tawheed, then we will be calm. We won't be afraid of anything. If Allah is with you, are you going to be afraid of anything? Well, what is it, you know, everything that you are afraid of, you know, your enemies, your whatever can hurt you, are like vicious animals tied to a chain in the hand of somebody who is powerful and wise. When you deserve it, Allah will, will loosen, you know, the chain and they will get to you. But if you were good and you were on Allah's path, they're chained. They can't do anything unless Allah allows them to do that. So religion at its heart is monotheism and acts of worship. Tawheed wa ibadah. You, you, you assert you, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah. There's no power that operates in this universe other than Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. We have, to, we have to hammer that in, in, in our psyche so we're not stressed out about everything, about jobs and about, you know, my boss wants to fire me and, and my coworker wants to get, you know, wants to, you know, plot for me. You don't worry about any of that stuff because you only have one entity to please, which is Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. You focus on Allah and he takes care of you. You don't worry about anybody else as long as you're doing what you're, what you're supposed to do. And the highest level of faith is to only see Allah as the sole actor in the universe. That's the highest level of faith. Once you reach to that understanding, you, I mean, you have the, the faith that Allah wants you to have. In, um, in Surah Hud, chapter 11 and verse 123, وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُ الْأَمْرُ كُلُّهُ فَاعْبُدْهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ To Allah alone belongs the knowledge of what is hidden in the heavens and in the earth. And to Him all matters are returned. So worship Him and put your trust in Him and your Lord is never unaware of what you do. So Allah did not order us to worship Him until He told us that all matters start with Him and end with Him. All matters are under his control. So nothing happens without his knowledge and permission. Nothing. Nothing ever happens without Allah's permission and knowledge. We have to hammer that into our psyche. So Tawheed, the true belief in Allah, makes a believer fearless. Like the Sahaba were, the companions. You look at the history of the companions and they're like superhuman beings. No, they were humans like, you know, like us. You know, same thing as us. They had the same prophet. They had the same book. They had the same God. We all share all of that. But they understood what Islam is. They understood the book. They understood the concept of Tawheed. So they were fearless. They were like lions. They did not care as long as they are, you know, on, on the path that Allah put them on. And that's what, what Tawheed, once, once it, it takes hold in you, it, takes you, it makes you a fearless person. Nothing affects you. Everything, you know, the good and the bad, they roll off your back because whatever Allah wants is the best thing for you. 
The good things happen, alhamdulillah. Bad things happen, alhamdulillah, we'll be patient. That's, that's what Tawheed does. So, when we understand this, this fact, we will be at ease. You don't, you don't have to worry about you know, taking you know, Xanax or, or something to calm you down. Or, it, it, you know, it, it, it makes you calm and it makes you, you know, a stronger person. So if we are afraid and stressed out, then our level of Tawheed needs, needs to be elevated. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.